Welcome everyone. In today's video, we're going to take a look at seven factory muscle trucks you forgot about. Let's dive in. In the seventh spot, we have the 1990-1993 Chevy SS 454. These days, 245 horsepower doesn't sound like much, but when it's being cranked out in 1990 by a 454 cubic inch big block in a half-ton truck, it's pure heaven. In the modern era, the 1990-1993 Chevy SS 454 truck was the progenitor of the muscle truck, and it set the tone with its sinister black paint, steamroller tires, chrome wheels, deep exhaust note, bold graphics, and three 45-pound-feet of torque. Sure, you can pick up any used later model LS-powered half-ton truck for the same chump change with more power, but it's just not going to have the badass look, the big block power plant, or the collectability of the earlier SS-454. Ask for the original by name. Number 6, 1991 GMC Cyclone. For the first time in its 89-year history, GMC decided to build a muscle car. Not having any passenger cars on which to create one, GMC did the only thing they could. Use the lightest pickup in the lineup, the Jimmy, and stuff a 280-horsepower turbocharged 4.3-liter Chevy V6 under its hood. The power rating was laughably low as they regularly ran high 12-second stock right off the showroom floor. With only 2,995 produced in its single year of production, the GMC Cyclone is rare enough to command big dollars, but if you're playing a long game and want to invest, you could do a whole lot worse. The turboed 4.3 liter was notorious for its weak cast pistons, a result of having marginally sized fuel injectors. But since the 4.3 is a small block Chevy with two fewer cylinders, this is an easy upgrade. Next, we have the 1992-1993 GMC Typhoon. The mechanical doppelganger to the Cyclone, the 1992-1993 GMC Typhoon had an extra row of seats for you to double the number of terror-stricken passengers. Also based on the lightweight Jimmy, the Typhoon's extra row of seats and covered cargo area provided owners with some semblance of usable space not possessed by the Cyclone. One can see how the Typhoon, the original muscle SUV, influenced today's SRT Durango Hellcat and Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, both of which use all-wheel drive to produce unholy amounts of starting line grip on ordinary all-season tires. Number four is the 1991-1996 Dodge Dakota RT. The 1980s were chock full of cheap imported trucks with underwhelming powertrains. So when Chrysler went looking for a niche to dominate, mid-sized trucks were the answer. The answer was the Dakota, and it fell in between compact trucks and full-size trucks, becoming a segment of one. What nobody expected was for the K-Car brand to stuff a 230-horsepower 318 cubic inch Magnum V8 small block between the fenders. Combined with the truck's lightweight, the V8-equipped Dakota could run away and hide from full-size half-ton trucks from Ford, Chevy, and GMC. Since Chrysler didn't have a rear-drive muscle car, media outlets of the era often compared the V8 Dakota, perhaps unfairly, to faster and more expensive contemporary muscle cars. As a side note, Carroll Shelby recognized the genius of the V8 Dakota 
and jumped in to build a limited series of Shelby Dakotas, which were largely cosmetic. Number 3. 1993 to 1995 Ford Lightning F-150 Ford was already on a roll with the 5-liter Mustang when the F-150 Lightning truck debuted in 1993. Taking the Wally Bieber-designed GT40 intake manifold and cylinder heads from the Ford Performance Parts catalog and slapping them on a larger 351 cubic inch Windsor, but with the upper manifold turned 180 degrees, produced 240 horsepower. A near-perfect match for the output of the Chevy SS454, but with 100 cubic inches less. It was a battle of the brutes, but whereas Chevy threw in the towel, Ford soldiered on until 1995. These half-ton short-bed single-cab trucks would be a staple at drag strips everywhere and often warranted a race class of their own. Of note was that the Lightning, along with the Cobra Mustang, were the inaugural products for Ford's fledgling SVT performance division. Number 2, 1997 to 2003 Dodge Dakota RT. The cosmetic redesign of the Dodge Dakota midsize pickup in 1997 brought it in line with the semi truck look of the full size models. And from some angles, the Dakota looks nearly identical. Had that been the only change, we would have been fine. But product planners also made the 360 CI 5.9 liter Magnum an option in the RT package, bulking up cubes by 42 and horsepower by another 25 for a total of 250 horsepower. At the time, Detroit was on fire with late model V8 performers like Camaro, Firebird, and Mustang, so these big inch Dakotas went unnoticed based on their performance. With Dakotas, you'll wanna remember that Dodge started feeding Jeep's 230 horsepower 4.7 liter SOHC V8 into the model beginning in 2000. And although power is decent, there are no performance parts available like there are for the 5.2 liter and 5.9 liter Magnum small blocks. Number one is the 1999 to 2004 Ford Lightning F-150. Ford SVT was a busy place around the turn of the century, with products spewing forth for nearly every vehicle line. Had this not been the case, we might have seen a new Lightning earlier, so we chalked the delay up to them having a finger in every pie. The wait was worth it, though, because when the Lightning returned on Ford's new 10th generation F-Series, it would pack 360 horsepower via an Eaton supercharged and intercooled 5.4-liter Triton V8. Power increased again in 2001 to 380 horsepower. With just a pulley injector swap and a tune, these models can run with newer V8 Mustangs and Camaros, and 11-second time slips weren't unheard of in nearly stock trim. With over 28,000 built, they aren't hard to find either. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.